What's up everybody, I'm Eric Hansen with Backpacking TV. I am here in Peru and I am on a series of three treks over a month of travel here in Peru, filming for the TV show that I work on called Epic Trails. And uh, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to discuss trekking, international trekking, and how to go on your very own trek, your dream tryst, uh -oh. your dream trip, your bucket list adventure. Uh, it can be, it can happen, and it is not as difficult as you might think. So here on the channel, we're gonna be breaking it down, starting now. Anytime you're doing a trek, international, there's a lot of places in the world that have much higher elevations than what we have in the US. So here in Peru, most of the treks that I'm doing, I'm gonna be up over 10,000 feet, 12,000 feet, maybe even 15,000 feet in some of these places. I've been on some here in Peru where I'm over 17,000 feet. But it's super important that you give yourself some time to acclimatize when you first get into a country. Go settle in, of course, timing, takes time <laughs> having that takes time and money but if you it's really important that you acclimatize and not just go for a trek straight off the getting off the plane so i'm here in a place called chachapoyas we're up at about 8,000 feet and i am just kind of settling in to local life here um, just breathing the, the high mountain air for a few days before going off even further and higher is a really important first step and I highly recommend it. Plus, it's just a great opportunity to get a little local flair and a taste of local culture, food, all of the things that make travel so fun. So what even is trekking? Well, trekking is basically a backpacking trip except in most cases you're in a foreign country and oftentimes it's associated with having more support. So having porters or guides or any, some sort of organization that's helping you get around. So I am doing the Huaywash Trek here in Peru and I'm also doing a trek outside of Cusco, not the Inca Trail but a different one, and another trek in the Amazonas region. So these are supported treks. They have guides, they have English speaking companions that will help me navigate all around Peru. Buenas tardes. Gracias. Uy. <laughs> fun people dancing here in the courtyard. You know, life is fun here in Peru. So, there are, you could just go backpacking, which is certainly possible, which would be self-supported, um, or trekking where you're basically using local infrastructure, local knowledge, local help to make it happen. If international trips are new to you, I recommend going with help. Um, it'll make things easier. It'll make things less stressful. They will just handle all of the logistics. However, the downside is that of course, it will be pricey. Certain places in the world are, however, dirt cheap to travel to. Asia, for example, is very inexpensive and you can do some trekking for a very reasonable cost, like $20 a day kind of thing. Uh, here in South America, uh, you can do also very similar. You can have uh, any level of support that you would like. You can go really high end, $500 a day, $1,000 a day per person, or if you're like me, and you also prefer more budget backpacking, there are totally options for you. I'm gonna head over to the main square and be showing you something here about how to actually organize these treks. So I'm in the lovely town of Chachapoyas here in Peru, and I did wanna talk a little bit about how to actually organize an international trek. That's a really important thing that I need to talk about before we ever go on the actual trek. So there are three main ways that you can organize an international track. One, you can organize it before you ever go, book it online, have the whole thing be all inclusive, pick you up at the airport, uh, take you to all the logistics completely organized for you. It's a really wonderful way to get into it, uh, especially if you're ever nervous about traveling. However, it is a little expensive to do it that way. Here in South America, it might range from anywhere from like 
a thousand dollars a day uh, to do it like that. Obviously you can find cheaper options, you can find more expensive options depending on uh, what you are looking to do. But that's the easiest way to get into it. You have to pay a lot of money, but you can get full service. There'll be guides, there'll be cooks, there'll be English speaking people um, that can really help you navigate this system. Now, there's another way that uh, you can do it if you don't wanna pay that kind of money. Uh, I actually just walked by a few of the spots. I'm gonna go backwards now uh, to go find it because you can organize these trips as you actually get into the country. Now, this does require having a little bit more free time, um, but if you're a budget traveler, uh, you can pop into one of these stores, I'm about to walk into one, and just walk in and ask and be like, hey, I wanna go take one of these trips. Um, so here is like a whole board of different trips that you can take. If you wanna do something like the Cordillera Blancas, the Huaywash, Torres del Paine in Chile, wherever you wanna go, you can just walk up without any really pre-organization and you can just go talk to them, negotiate a price, barter it, there's room to negotiate uh, and you can just go. I could leave tomorrow if I wanted to. There'd be people here waiting. Here is a, another whole shop dedicated to tours and adventures and anything that you want. There's like four right here on the street. So that is a really great way if you wanna do it uh, cheaper. Booking it in country is gonna be way cheaper than doing it from home because you can actually negotiate and bargain. You have bargaining power. So that is a good way to do it. Now, if ultra budget travel is on your list and you wanna save even more money, there's a third option. And that is going to be to hire a local person who's not actually a guide. In Peru, they'd be known as arrieros. They are horse masters, donkey masters. They will actually help you carry your stuff, help you carry, uh, get through the mountains, get everywhere you need to go. Got a cute little Doberman right here. Um, and they will basically be a guide, except for the fact that they don't speak English. So if you're adventurous and you're willing to go, or if you speak the language, that is a really awesome way to do it. I have done a bunch of treks like that, um, where I just hired an arriero, and it's just me and a guy with a donkey, and we're just walking through the mountains together. And what I'll do is I'll provide him food, and cover any bus fare or anything like that that he might need. And uh, it's really, really cheap. It's basically backpacking, but with a local person who will be able to help you and also carry a bunch of equipment for you, such as food, uh, extra water, uh, cooking supplies, things like that, so you can lighten your load on these treks, which is a great way to do it. Uh, and then, of course, the fourth option. Hola, que tal? The fourth option is to simply just go backpacking trip on a backpacking trip, um, which is very much like trekking, except there's no support. Um, you're just out there like you were, would be at home. You'd be responsible for all the logistics. It's totally a good way to go. It'll save you tons of money, but you obviously have to be more competent, more confident, uh, and you don't have any support or backup in case anything goes wrong, and you have to carry everything on your own. Okay, I'm somewhere quieter. Hopefully this comes through a little better. Um, so let's talk about other things to consider. Uh, simply getting around, getting out from airports, things like that. Um, obviously, if you go with the route of booking something at home, they are going to almost in every case pick you up from the airport, handle all those logistics and make it super easy for you. So you can just show up and kind of get shuttled along all of the points along the map and uh, it's easy and it's the safest option. You get great food along the way. It's a really good deal. So that is certainly a good way to go. Obviously it's the most expensive. Um, also, you can just get around really easily. Almost every place in the world, it's easy to get taxis or to hire um, local transport. Obviously you can take buses almost anywhere. It's gonna depend of course on your comfort level as a traveler. I have been traveling for many years in my life, so it's very easy and comfortable for me to simply just show up to an airport, hire a driver, and get wherever I need to go. If it's new for you, then 
re recommend booking stuff in advance because it makes stuff just less stressful. Uh, other things to consider when going in countries. You can buy almost anything that you need in these countries, including food for backpacking. Um, you can get this equipment, uh, fuel, things like that. There's gear shops in these countries where you can buy them. Um, so you don't have to fly with certain dangerous or of, of course uh, illegal things like camping gas. Trekking and traveling is actually a lot easier and a lot less scary than you might think. And I highly recommend it for people to try out is having a good water filter. Make sure that you travel with something that can also filter out viruses. Uh, that's kind of one of the biggest concerns with international travel. So something like Rapid Peer that I've been using, Grail, uh, the Guardian from MSR, all these different levels of uh, filtrations, purifier systems. Um, and of course, chemical tablets if you wanna go that route as well. I do recommend having a more robust filter in foreign countries because oftentimes the water is not as good and waters are, the water sources are much more polluted in some of these places. If you have questions about how to go on an international trek yourself, leave them in the comments below because it is an amazing experience and I highly recommend it. It might change your life and there's some of the most incredible zones to go backpacking in South America, Asia, Africa, all these places, and it's not as scary and as inaccessible as you might think. All right, if it's something you'd be interested in, hit me up, I hope you liked this video. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, make sure you subscribe here on Backpacking TV. And I'm Eric Hansen, I'm in Peru. I'm about to go on my last and final trek of my month here. I'll see you later.